What's up YouTube, what's up friends and fans? This is Paul Friedman, Fossil Fool, coming at you with another video to show how the first mod was made. This video is gonna show the stitch and glue process with the G10 hull panels. So if you've been curious what it's like working with G10 as a hull material, you will like this video. I also wanted to use this video to try to answer some of the questions that I've received about how to do bike sailing. So while I have you, bike sailing really consists of three elements, the wheels and the, and the support for the boat when it's on the trailer, whether you're putting something underneath the boat that supports it or whether you're using the hull itself as the trailer, which I did in this case, you're gonna need some way to attach your wheels. Then you've got your hitch. What are you gonna do for connecting the boat to the bike? Um, I've actually been covering that pretty strong in other videos, so that's not going to be the focus here. And lastly, you might want to have your bike on board with you. And if it's a small sailboat, those are the only ones that you can tow by bike. That might lead you to a folding bike. In the first mod, I came up with a really cool watertight folding bike compartment, and you'll see how that was made. How to make your boat as light as possible, because every pound matters um, depending on your road to the water your weight of your craft whether you're, whether you're towing it uphill is gonna really affect um, the strength of the wheels and the strength of you on your bike and whether you're able to do it my 130 pound banshee which goes up to 180 to 200 say on the way to the water that boat was compatible with human power with no motor and my 350 pound first mod, I've pretty much switched to only doing it by, with the motor because it's easier. Hopefully that gives you a range of knowing what to, what to go for. Beyond 400 pounds, you're gonna need such strong wheels that like you're gonna be working with motorcycle wheels, um, scooter wheels, moped wheels, things like that, which are heavy. So then those wheels themselves and their axle and their um, hardware are gonna increase the weight of your system considerably. My goal was to stick with an ultralight um, boat and try to use bicycle grade parts. My boat being 350 pounds is a little bit heavier than my bicycle grade parts really are good for. So you're gonna be really needing like downhill grade um, rims, axles, and hubs. But because I really wanted to use the one-sided, the wheelchair style, that limited me. So what I've been finding is that it's been hard to find high enough grade rims, axles, hubs for my project with the boat weighing in at 350 pounds. Hope that helps you make your decisions and get to the water by bike without breaking too much parts on your rigs. I want you to have fun and no frustration or as little as possible. So hope that these videos help you along in your quest to experience the adventure, the freedom of amphibious bike sailing. And if you go all the way and create a way on your boat to, to hold your bike while you travel, then that opens the possibility of going across a body of water, taking out somewhere, and then biking on, which is like, you know, truly living the dream. Or in my case, sailing around San Francisco, getting out at Aquatic Park, and biking home because you know, I was done sailing for the day. So little things like that are pretty cool um, to do with bike sailing. Com completely impossible when you start doing car sailing. Hope you enjoy the making of the first mod and I hope this video answers all of your questions. Feel free to drop a comment if you want more. Getting into the build and right away you can see the flexibility of this translucent seafoam green G10 material in 16th inch. It's almost like you could tie it in a knot. And uh, when you consider that uh, half the quarter inch plywood would be snapping if you tried to do stuff like this, it's just incredible that it ended up being a functional boat. And at this point, I had already been through quite a process to see how it compared. And I decided that it was tough enough and uh, strong enough to make a boat out of. But at this point, it was a leap of faith. We're following the stitch and glue process. This is a very rapid way to make a boat with chines. So Caleb is zip tying the chine to the bottom right here. And then we 
as the curve progresses, we have to tilt it up slightly. And here we are putting in the plywood frames. So the build is moving really rapidly. And just once again, seeing how floppy it is as I try to connect it to the frames with string and zip ties. Just two to three weeks into the build of my custom 17 foot first mate uh, designed by Ross Lillystone of Australia and it's going really well. We have gotten past a small issue that I had <clears throat> in which um, the scale was off between the frames and the hull. I've dealt with that by adding um, spacers or packers. Um, to go between the smaller frame and the larger hull. Here's another closer view showing the wood grain on the Douglas fir packers. The packers actually have allowed for a really gradual um, weld where there's a gentle angle there. Um, with not very much uh, of a cabocil thickened epoxy, mostly glass. I'll show you just another one of those. There was a lot of feedback and interest in the fact that I've chosen to build the hull out of G10. Now the frames are still uh, built as spec in quarter inch and half inch uh, marine grade plywood, Hydrotech. But the hull, which has this greenish color, is G10. And G10 is a very flexible, uh, very flexible material, but of course it's also very tough and it has high tensile strength. So right now the boat has a lot of bit of wiggle. Not so much around the frames that I've glued in. As you can see, those are starting to feel pretty good. Uh, but you know, from front to back, some people, including myself, are wondering uh, how the flimsiness of the G10 is going to affect the quality of the boat. The boat does not have the side deck yet with the carling, which is what essentially turns the flimsy material into an L shape that has more of like an I-beam effect going on. And you can really see that um, when you start playing around with uh, disposable plastic food containers. So basically, you know, this food container is really um, flimsy, but then when I add the side deck, using similar amount of force in my hand, you don't see nearly as much twist front to back. 120 pounds in G10 and plywood. Now we're coming to the midships area. You can see I'm building up the centerboard case here. And this thwart with the black diagonal tubes is core to the bike trailer system. Those tubes are what receive the stingers when I insert the wheels from outside the boat. They're sealed at the thwart and open at the outside of the boat. I'm able to control it pretty much under control here and I am nowhere near the slippery part of the boat ramp. The only thing holding them up was their own buoyancy. The aft buoyancy is being sealed in here and we are also putting a textured surface down so that it's less slippery, more durable. Fiberglass comes in different weights and this is a medium weight. So it actually has a pretty good grip when you're sitting on it. I decided to go with twice as many side deck knees as was shown in the plans because I wanted to make it a stiffer boat. I was 
basically compensating for the flexible material. So there's six points of attachment for each carling, plus I increased the size of the carling over what was shown in the plants. This work session, we're sealing up the aft buoyancy. I've got this nice lightning bolt shaped piece of Douglas fir there. That's gonna strengthen the area of the transom where the outboard motor will mount. Now I'm cutting out a hatch lid and you can see that it's been routed to allow the hatch lid to sit flush. And now we're piling on a bunch of nuts and bolts to glue it on. This is just part of sealing up the little loose ends of the boat. Nice and wet. So gotta rough that up. Oh yeah. Take the top part and press it down, but before I do that, I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding. Press this down. And if you've been wondering what that bit of custom work is, it's a mast partner and mast gate for my unstayed 16 foot mast. Now moving on to the decks, prepping them for a coat of very fine deck cloth. At this point in the process, I was starting to believe that the wood grain of the Hydrotech quarter inch plywood was a beautiful thing and planning to leave it as is. I ended up going with multiple coats of varnish. Time will tell if that's a good approach. I think paint would protect it better. But uh, I love the way that it complements the light green of the G10. Trimming off all the excess fiberglass with a sharp knife and revealing the beautiful wood grain. Now placing a long runner on the bottom of the boat. The point of this is to stiffen the floor of the boat when you're walking in the cabin area and also to protect the G10 a little bit from rocks and sand on beach landings. Now we're rolling out some glass to tape up the chines. Look at how there's the wet stripe of wet epoxy over a light area. The light area is sanded G10. With G10, you always have to sand off the factory coating to get to a stronger bond for anything. Now the boat's right side up again, and I'm about to seal up the bow. Applying this thickened epoxy so that I can clamp down that custom cut piece of plywood. And this is the last chance I'm going to get to work on the inside, so I, I, I save this for pretty far along in the process. You can see a carbon reinforced cross beam there. I was compensating for the fact that some of these frames are smaller than what's shown in the plans because I was leaving that large internal volume for my folding bike. The bike fits in only one orientation with the handlebars close to where I'm working right there. And it barely fits with the trailer wheels if I'm using two inch tires. 
I like the three inch tires better, but they actually don't fit this compartment. Now zooming in on the pivot point, that darker green tube that runs across the boat, that's gonna be where the uh, bow sprit slash tow bar mounts. And here's the lid that I was talking about. It has a tapered fit. I was aiming for like a ground glass chemistry stopper waterproof fit. The harder you push down on it, the more waterproof it is. This area frequently does get walked on when you're docking and stuff, so it needs to be strong. Much easier. Thanks, Caleb. Only goes in one way. I've made some notes to myself. That's where the two tires are supposed to end up. It's kind of like. There's the plywood centerboard blanks. I had cut them, I thought I was going to use them, and then I measured them, and they weigh 14 pounds, and I don't want 14 more pounds on my boat. I would rather have six. See, the whole thing is quite flexible because it's only got a single layer of fabric on the back. Put this ful fulcrum right underneath there. It's actually pretty strong, you know? I'm like putting most of my weight on it. Just go for it, man. Damn. Yes, this is why people pay the big bucks for carbon fiber. Oh yeah, nice and flat. Everywhere has gotta be flat. There's gonna be one final layer that goes over this whole thing. job today is to cover that jagged edge. Yesterday I used this really simple pink foam form to make a single layer cap. It hardened overnight. It's not very strong. It's very flexible. Okay. The big moment.
Deanna thinks it looks like a whale or something. Yeah, he's going home. The big humpback. Nice. Wow, snug. Perfect. Well, if you've gotten this far, please enjoy a little bit of sailing footage from Tamales Bay, California. Not a bike destination, but a great destination. Thanks for sticking with me. And please throw me a like and a subscribe and drop a comment below if you want to hear anything else about the project. Thanks a lot.